This week saw a new chapter in one of TV's hottest franchises, RuPaul's Drag Race UK. And that's not all. One of the world's biggest reality TV franchises, RuPaul's Drag Race is headed to Australia in 2020. Details are scarce on the ground so far about what the format's going to look like. We know that RuPaul and his sidekick, Michelle Visage, have been traveling to the UK to host the show over there, but we don't know what's gonna happen over here yet. But where did this all start? Drag is definitely not a new invention. Let's have a look. We can trace the art of drag as far back as 500 BC in ancient Greece. The reason that men dressed up as women in theatre was good old-fashioned sexism. Women weren't allowed to perform. Add a dose of good old-fashioned misogyny and you have comments from Plato and Socrates saying that men were degrading themselves by dressing as women. Big jump forward in time to the 1500s takes us to the time of Shakespeare. The Globe Theatre, where women were still not allowed to perform. All of the female roles were performed by men because women performing and acting on stage was considered unseemly. Some people believe the word drag itself came into use around this time. Folk stories say that it was an acronym for dressed as a girl, but more likely it was a reference to the Victorian era later on where long costumes literally dragged across the stage. Kabuki theatre started in Japan in 1603 as an all-female form of theatre entertainment. In the 1630s, women were once again banned from performing and replaced with men who played the male and female roles. Another jump forward in time to 1904, J.M. Barry wrote the stage play Peter Pan. The first ever performance of Peter Pan on stage had the eternal boy child played by Nina Bosico. The first film production had the role played by Betty Bronson. And over the years, stars like Mia Farrow and Alison Williams have followed in their stead. 1904 also gifted the world with the first ever drag superstar, Julian Eltinge. Eltinge performed in vaudeville shows, on Broadway and in Hollywood films. His career only faltered when the American government started to prosecute people for cross-dressing in public. In America, from 1950 to 1969, the fear of communism affected the queer community profoundly. Anything that was considered subversive was punished severely by the American government. Gay bars were raided and anyone not dressing in line with the gender assigned to them was arrested. On June 28, 1969, the police raided a gay bar owned by the Mafia called the Stonewall Inn. The community inside fought back. The incident became known as the Stonewall Riots. It sparked a revolution of advocacy within the queer community. Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera were two of the drag queens who fought back against the raids. The riots inspired the first ever gay pride parade one year later. The freedom that came along with the acceptance of queer culture brought us the delightfully androgynous David Bowie, the cult classic, the Rocky Horror Picture Show, and the sweet transvestite Frankenfurter, as well as the films of John Waters, like Pink Flamingos and Hairspray, starring his muse, Divine. Divine's look later went on to inspire the villainous Ursula from Disney's The Little Mermaid. Drag queens were also instrumental in raising money, support and awareness for people affected by the HIV AIDS crisis in the 80s. In 1994, the Australian film The Adventures of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert was released, shining a light on the culture of Australian drag. It's impossible to mention all of the amazing performers who have been inspired by the art of drag. But there's one queen who we simply can't leave out, and that is RuPaul. RuPaul Charles first rose to fame as a dancing extra in the music video for the B-52's hit Love Shack in 1989. Since then, he's appeared in movies, TV shows, and drag conventions around the world. When RuPaul's Drag Race started in 2008, 
the world of drag performance changed forever. Drag performance has been thrust into the mainstream. But it's important to remember the history and where it comes from and the change that it's made in our world.